Hello, I'm George Alfredis. And I'm Dave Matthews. And this is What's Next Wall Street. This is a show about winning trades. That's right. We want to help you learn about trading in a fun, entertaining, and most importantly, a useful way. Absolutely. So here's the thing. We're going to talk about all the hot new trending products and services that you not only want to use, but also invest in. We'll also cover the fundamentals of those companies to make you an informed trader and make it easier for you to target investment potential. Plus, we'll share our thoughts on where the charts and indicators say a particular stock is going. Yeah, all this info can help you create a tailored trade plan and help you stay up to speed on what's next Wall Street so that all you have to do is stack your gains. You can email us at optionsplayers.com or hit us up on social media at what's next Wall Street with your questions. We can also direct you to the instructors and experts over at Options Players who dig into those trading fundamentals. Yes, sir. So listen, not only can you watch us now, like on an episode on Options Players' YouTube channel, but you can also listen to the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast. And today, drum roll, please, we have a special guest. We have referred to Options Players' lead instructor, uh, Greg Kraus, to answer questions or weigh in on some trending IPOs. He's really great at charting stock as well. But we are so happy to have you here with us today, Greg. Welcome to the show. Oh, thanks for having me again. All right, Greg, you're a lead instructor. Does that mean you tell everyone else to do or do you actually teach some classes here? Uh, I don't tell anybody what to do. Uh, I don't even tell my students what to do. Uh, so, but I do uh, teach multiple classes, either through technical analysis or some fundamentals, uh, with probably some more classes coming up that more focus on uh, like finance. We did an economics one. Uh, so now we'll focus more on corporate finance so people understand what they're reading uh, when they look at those earnings reports. You know, I wish they had these classes when I was in high school. This would have been a lot better than typewriting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, y'all, a lot has been said about electric cars, but I'm on to the next one. Maybe instead of electric cars, we should try flying. I'm not talking about planes either. I'm talking about taxis, as in flying taxis. Starting in 2024, passengers flying into Rome are going to be flying to city center in startup if, if startup company uh, Volocopter has its way. Now, Volocopter is a startup based in Germany that calls itself the pioneer of electrical urban mobility. I hope this won't be like Fifth Element. Do you remember Fifth Element? <laughs> oh my gosh, it was amazing. Yes. Of course, the Fumicino Airport in Rome is expected to pioneer the battery-powered two-seater rotor blade flying taxi. So instead of it taking 45 minutes to get to the city center, it'll take only 15. Of course, with that 30 minutes saved, it'll cost you about 175 bucks. What? Besides Europe and Asia, Volocopter plans to launch in the US as well. Now, there's a lot of companies in this space right now. Yeah, so, so many, it's ridiculous. But I don't know, would you, are you ready to do this? Are you ready to like be on a helicopter? Not that little janky <laughs> thing. You know, the, the, the market in the USA is flying too with upstarts like Joby Aviation with investments from Toyota and JetBlue Ventures and Talon Air, who's created a two-part aircraft with a pre-stage vertical takeoff, watch this, and landing module that lifts the aircraft from the terminal wow. and a second stage, you know, the important one with the passengers, it separates and flies on until it gets captured at the end of the journey by another VTOL aircraft. What? Unbelievable. Now, the former SpaceX guys at Talon have a contract with the U.S. Navy's venture capital arm for electric flight pods called Agility Prime, which may or may not be a transformer. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to have to head to their website to find out. Okay, I'm getting flashbacks to the fifth element again with Lilu falling into Bruce Willis' stolen cab right now. Remember that? It's a good thing these are going to be astronomers, a oh, no, astronomers, autonomous, those are astronauts, uh, <laughs> because road rage in the skies will not end well, okay? <laughs> Look yeah, at that. Do you remember that? I was so busy. I'm, I hope these things are flying better than Bruce Willis did. I know, right? Those things look <laughs> very heavy. <laughs> Today's pro tip is brought to you by optionsplayers.com. Let's talk about the incremental entry buy half. That way, if it goes in the direction you want, then you're happy. If it doesn't, then you're also happy, but you only play half and can okay. buy more lower. Trading is a mental game, so own the game and take emotions out. And at every opportunity, this will change the dynamics of your daily approach and the subsequent results moving forward. Own the game. I love that. Right? Okay. Okay. 
Okay, this is the part of the show where we get to hear from you. You can always hit us up on social media at What's Next Wall Street or email us at www.optionsplayers.com. So this first email comes from Michael O. from Hanover, Maryland, uh, or Massachusetts, actually, with inflation increasing. How can we best hedge our portfolios? Is metals a good alternative to be in? I'm glad Greg is here. Greg, here's our first question of the day for you. Should we be in metals? So how can you hedge against inflation? Uh, Historically, you were looking at um, gold was that hedge that everyone wanted, along with a few other things, what we called uh, high cash, right? We kind of talked about that in the last episode, where individuals with a lot of cash can invest that money because normally when inflation goes up, so does the interest rates. Um, but we're this is a new thing. We have these new investors and new millennials, and everyone's just throwing cash at whatever investment it is and then you then we have this new thing crypto so what is that going to do with the historical thing that we have uh so will crypto actually survive inflation everybody thinks it will um but we don't really know and uh we're gonna have to see so um i would say a little bit of crypto a little bit of your normal metals um why not especially uh, you can actually buy them on like a stock or an eft or you can actually get them and hold them in your hand i like doing that myself Cause now, like, I got a little gold. You know, it's a little bit better than looking at my phone and like, I got a little gold. George's got a little bit of gold. <laughs> yeah, in the yeah. Future. <laughs> uh, but you know, you got some silver or whatever you want to get in there. You don't just have to get gold. Um, and then, of course, uh, talk to a financial advisor on what you could do. You have other assets uh, right now: housing or housing houses, real estate, things like that. That's hot, and it's an asset that appreciates, right? So it's you can put your money in that, and with inflation, it goes up. And with Zillow having bought all this inventory that now BlackRock yeah. is putting on the market, like how? But, but can, that's what you have to worry about too, right? Because it's the, the market's pumped be that up. We've already pumped the market up so much. So if you do do that, you have to, you got to find a good deal. You know, you just can't go out. I'm just going to go buy a house. Oh, I Greg totally told me to. that. Yeah. So <laughs> look at assets. It doesn't matter what the asset is as long as it's, it's not some major depreciating asset. So okay. like a new car, Georgia. Yeah. What? Major depreciating asset. Hey, let's take another email. Jessica from Fayetteville, New York asks if and or when the market starts to correct, what do you feel will be the better place to be? staple companies or technology companies? When? Great question and one that we can only guess on, but you'll notice how the market has been moving from one sector to the other as the market continues to melt higher. If the market starts to crack, generally you'll see the high flyers get hit first. Staples generally lag, so we try to move them into, move them when there's adversity about to rear its ugly head. Oof. So if you have a question, we can answer it. Or we'll find someone else at the table who can. <laughs> Hit us up on social media at What's Next Wall Street or email us at WNW at optionsplayers.com with your thoughtful questions. Hey, Georgia, how about a tech acronym as a new stock symbol? Come on. But do we need another meta digital <laughs> deep dive after we want to get back to IRL as the industry opens or the country rather opens exactly, up? Exactly, yes. Do you even know what that geek speak is? I don't. Is? I'm just trying to seem cool. I'm like, yeah, that's, I mean, that's fun. Like, tiddly mental dude. Like, a shot. <laughs> All right. That's not even close, you Texas Valley Ranch girl. <laughs> okay. All right. The term <laughs> meta comes from the 1992 science fiction book Snow Crash, where the author Neil Stevenson predicted our tapping into cyber culture directly with headsets. Now, this was placed in a future dystopian period where governments crashed and the world was run by large organizations. But Mark's not planning that part of the story. That's oh, my gosh. Mark Zuckerberg. Okay. <laughs> and, and Zucky didn't invent the tech either. Steve Mann, a PhD and father of wearable computing and augmented reality, or AR, from Toronto, actually built the wearable first glasses computer. It was more like a bicycle helmet and a TV screen periscope on a backpack computer. Wow. Oh, he even had to put up his citywide personal mesh network decades before 5G and municipal Wi-Fi. Now, I saw Steve talk at the first South by Southwest Interactive in 1996. He didn't even show up. He did it over the precursor to Zoom called See You, See Me on the internet. I remember See You, See Me. <laughs> right? I remember that. It's a parallel port camera. But think about it. Here we are in an era where Facebook has been proven to interfere with election results and has algorithms that incite reactions that are negative in their user base, yeah. all in an effort to make their service sticky and keep members engaged yeah. so they can sell more ads. Yeah. All at the cost of democracy 
for raising their engagement with the users and their revenue. Yeah. So do we really want to be wearing a Facebook interface on our heads where this incitement can be amplified because we're virtually inside the environment, thereby making it even more seemingly real? Fifth element, again. <laughs> right? <laughs> At least today we can close our laptop or put down our phone. And thanks to the built-in screen time from Apple, we can put limits on our exposure to applications and even see how many more or less hours we spent on our devices for the week. Something I try and mitigate religiously with my slowdown in my own social media usage. Yeah. Now, Google Glass Eyewear, that project has been relegated to con commercial use through manufacturing products where employees need to read things like complicated schematics and wire harnesses for building things like airplanes. So there is a use for this AR world. I think it's gonna be a long time though before people will want to wear something right in front of their face that blocks them out from the real world even when the new models of Oculus eyewear have cameras to bring the outside vision ghosted into the internal digital reality. The problem with all this stuff is human beings are social creatures and we want to be with our tribe. That's right. That's right. Even though we're just slightly socially distanced. Yeah. So I predict that for the next decade, this technology will be relegated to the relatively few who want to escape, albeit internally, just like the 1995 movie, Strange Days. Why does everything have to do with a movie or music with us? Everything relates to a muse, a song or a movie. Well, remember their mini disc players and spider headsets where they could play mental content? Yes, oh my gosh. It was so creepy. Oh my gosh, yes. Check out that movie for a throwback. It's like a digital representation of New Jack City yes, in a crack Yes, problem. yes, yes. Now, I hope that doesn't come true for that meta and their five to 10 year vision that Mark Zuckerberg has. Yes, Angela Bassett's in that one. I remember that one. Okay, Dave, as you know, I'm like a little kid because no matter what time of the year it is, the holidays are always just right around the corner. That's completely true. So don't even, don't fight me on it. I didn't say what holiday. Yes, usually I'm talking about Christmas. However, there's New Year's, there's Valentine's Day, there's St. Patrick's Day, there's National Popcorn Day, National Pie Day. I could go on and on, but I think you get my point. All I'm saying is that there's always a good reason to buy something. And now with these buy now, pay later, comp pay later companies, why wouldn't you? This isn't like when I was little, my parents would like put my Christmas gifts like on layaway in August and then I couldn't take them home. Like they weren't sitting in the closet. I didn't get to take toys home with me. They would get them in December. Fast forward to now with companies like Affirm and Klarna, Afterpay, Uplift, Zip, and others, you get the toys first and then pay later. Now they're basically point of sale installment loans and you can literally purchase anything. I'm talking about airline tickets, car accessories like tires. Wait, is that an accessory? Okay, yeah. well, anyway, designer bags are for sure an accessory, and you can buy those along with other luxury items like Rolexes. Y'all, I haven't even touched on like a tenth. Yeah, see, of the items. That's so cool, by the way. Of uh, the items available through all of these installment uh, companies. And you've got so many major retailers from Neiman's to Walmart accepting these payment methods. But I had a couple questions. Okay, are these companies the new credit cards and should we be investing in the ones that are public and maybe watching for the others to IPO? I have used them personally because like, you know, I can't just show up with a with a big old new Chanel bag. I have to, you know, be like, honey, I didn't even... I didn't even buy that because really that's not a lie. I haven't bought it. I'm buying oh. it. That's how you do that. <laughs> so if we buy now, will we pay later or get paid later? What is it, Greg? Um, you're right. It's just, it's, it's, it's a credit card. Uh, let's just say what it is. It's like um, you're paying it. There, is, there are no fees. There are nothing like that, but there is interest. Okay. Now that's going to be based upon your credit. Most of them, like a firm, is going to be based upon your credit score, like anything else. So when you apply for it, you could get anywhere from, you know, zero to up to I don't know, twenty four, twenty five percent. Jeez. Um, but now some companies might use that to their advantage and might pay that interest for you or have some deal with them like that to get you like zero. So you know when you sign a get, let's just say Home Depot, you get a Home Depot card. And it's zero interest for the first year on your initial purchase or something. Um, it, it, that's better because you're paying zero percent, right? Uh, versus maybe a firm where you might be paying it. So you still got to pay. Watch out because if you're paying uh, APR uh, around twenty percent, that's compounding monthly. That's going to be an effective annual rate. Um, 
21.934 percentage. So now so, that Chanel purse just cost me like yes, $6,000. Well, no, because if you're paying it off monthly, you know, you're de-stacking those, the payments, yeah, right? So it's okay. not, you're not paying that hundred and, well, it's not a hundred dollars worth <laughs> Chanel purse, right? But you're not paying that 20 something percent. It goes down every month, right? So, um, so, so you yeah, have to you're make paying higher for payments it. than the insurance. I'm sorry, the interest rather. But it's but it comes back to the difference in our generations. You know, we used you know our grandparents. We didn't use credit cards. That's right. You know, That's they right. had tabs and checks. You That's know, it. they knew the person at the hardware store or whatnot. Um, they just wrote their name down on it. And then we had credit cards. Yes. Now, millennial or the newer generations are much more likely to just do something on their smartphone. Yeah. And that is a firm in other ways. So now with Cash App. Um, and Venmo and all those other things, that's where it's going to. Like, here you go, boom, I'm going to put that on my firm. I don't need a credit card. Although it's still running against your credit, credit. in some way. Yeah. Um, I know I haven't really looked into it. I, I, I read something a while back. So when you do get it, you get that initial push, and that's what you get. And then it does. So will it hurt or help your credit? That is something I'd have to look into because if you're getting a firm credit, and you're paying it off in six months, and then they're closing it, or they're leaving it open because now you know how the length of your credit history, the right. average ah, length of your credit history. Yeah, I didn't think that's how you that. get above that 800. You that's can have right. perfect payments and everything, but you got to have that long credit length history. Usually, I, I just did. Uh, I play the mileage card game, so yeah. I just opened up another card to get another hundred thousand miles for British Airways because of the pandemic. I haven't been using my BA flight status. And if you don't lose those, use those miles, you lose them. So if I got a BA credit card, I could start earning points and I won't lose the 100,000 points I have banked in the United Kingdom. You got 100,000 points? Yeah. It's, the heck it's is wrong like with you? 20 bucks worth, maybe 1,000 oh, okay. bucks worth. Right. But anyway. 20 and 1,000, uh, there's a big difference. <laughs> was, but anyway, go on. <laughs> so when I open up this credit card, I now have, let's say it's a $20,000 opportunity to spend. So that will go towards my credit. If you buy a, something like a handbag, they might only approve you for that six thousand. And if Greg's saying if they lock you into that six thousand, yeah. that's going to tie into your total addressable credit Absolutely. that your social security number can support. So it could be bad if you have a bunch of these micro loans. A credit card with what I call a point strategy might be a smarter play for you. Probably should have talked to y'all before I bought that bag, huh? I don't I'm know. feeling real <laughs> stupid now. All right, well, sorry. <laughs> All right, so hey, we are so glad you could join us today. We had. A fantastic time. Please come back next week. Will you come back next week? Yep. Okay, good. We'll be here. <laughs> Remember, if you've got questions, we can try and help you answer them, and we'd love to hear from you. Email us right now at wnw@optionsplayers.com, or hit us up on the social media channels. You can see them all on the screen there or at What's Next Wall Street. Yeah, and of course, you can watch episodes of What's Next Wall Street on Options Players' YouTube page or listen on Spotify, Apple, or whatever, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm okay, George Alfredis. Wait, I'm George Alfredo. I'm, 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 I'm We'll see you next time on What's Next Wall Street. <laughs>